To further understand our process and its efficiency, we now look at the concept of work in process. Work in process is the average number of units inside the process being worked on or waiting inside or between workstations. This would also represent the number of customers inside the service factory being served or waiting to be served. Work in process is actual inventory inside the process to differentiate it from outside inventory like those waiting to get inside the process like raw materials or those that just got out like finished goods waiting to be taken by the next process or sold. To find out the work in process of any process, we will use Little's Law, named after John Little, who provided its mathematical proof. Little's Law simply states that the work in process is the throughput rate or output rate of the process times the process lead time. Little's Law applies only to stable processes or those in steady state. As we have learned, a process is stable when its input and output rates are the same or stable. We've seen earlier how a process moves from transient to steady state. Let's examine our original process, which is an unbalanced line, and find out its work in process. Here, throughput rate is 12 units per hour, and lead time is 15 minutes. So its work in process equals 3 units. This means our 5 operators are working on just 3 units at any one time. And these 3 units would most of the time be in the 3 slowest workstations, B, C, and E. Recall that the utilization of this process is 60%, which we derive by dividing the lead time by the product of the cycle time and number of operators. We can also come out with the same result if we divide the work in process by the number of operators. Some may find it easier to understand direct labor utilization this way. Five people working on just three units makes it 60%. Let's now apply Little's Law to our balance line of five operators and find out its work in process. Here, throughput rate is 20 units per hour, but lead time is still 15 minutes. So its work in process equals five units. This means our five operators are working on five units, or one each. It is clear to see that utilization here is 100%, because everyone has a job to do all the time. Also, in a balanced line, it is easy to remember that the number of operators is always equal to the number of work in process. Let's see the other variants of Little's Law. From the formula, work in process equals throughput rate times lead time, we can also derive the following relationship. Throughput is equal to work in process divided by lead time, and lead time is equal to work in process divided by throughput. By knowing any two variables, we can always figure out the third. Let's take a practical application. Suppose your friend, here wearing red, enters a service factory like a clinic or a bank. How long would you have to wait for him outside? If from your vantage point, you can see through the facility and counted there are 45 customers inside when your friend went in, and with your watch you estimated that three customers come out of it every minute, then you reckon, using little slow, that your friend would come out after 15 minutes. Let's have another situation. Suppose this time you wanted to find out how many people or customers there are inside the service facility. What you know from experience or from official sources, it should take only 10 minutes to serve a customer. With your watch, you also estimated that 5 customers are coming out every minute. Using little slow, you are confident to say there must be around 50 people inside the facility. Finally, before we leave this topic on work in process and little slow, Let's learn some ways to cut work in process. Your boss may ask you to reduce work in process to cut costs, namely holding costs such as cost of storage and cost of money. Or maybe he just wants you to reduce the clutter in the plant and free up some space for more productive use. One thing you would not want to do is hide the work in process before your boss arrives. Little Slow will help us do it the right way. 
From the formula, we can see that we can cut work in process if we can reduce either throughput rate or lead time or both. The choice depends on your other goals and which one is easier to reduce. In general, lead time is the harder of the two to reduce. If your process is currently overproducing, then all you have to do is to reduce the throughput rate to match the TAC and therefore cut work in process. In case your current throughput rate is already enough to meet the demand, and you don't want to cut or increase production, you have to cut lead time to reduce work in process. Lead time can be reduced using reengineering or value stream analysis by eliminating unnecessary steps or tasks. Just be sure that when you cut lead time, throughput or process cycle time is not affected. In a balanced line, this is unlikely to happen, since even if you remove any workstation, the process cycle time and the throughput will remain the same since every station is a bottleneck. In an unbalanced line, you have a chance of cutting lead time by reducing or eliminating the bottleneck. The bottleneck may shift to a faster station and you end up unintentionally increasing your throughput rate resulting in an increase rather than decrease in work in process. Finally, if nothing stops you from reducing both throughput rate and lead time, feel free to do so and you can reduce work in process much faster.